I am the warlord of sulfur. I get sulfur on everything. And here's the thing about sulfur. Here's the thing about sulfur. I've had it. Sulfur. Okay. Three words. Three words. Baby turtle farts. Baby rotten eggs. Baby turtle farts. That's what sulfur is. And I got it for my Lutra hard seltzer. But I, I got rid of it too. I got it for... We did a YouTube video on it. Um, um, we had bad sulfur. DMS is like the cream corn. The corn stuff, which some people do not taste. I do not think I taste it. And diacetyl is like the butterscotch or the butter, butter snuff. Butter snuff, say it, butter snuff. The horse is a diabetic. But sulfur, we we all deal with sulfur. We all deal with sulfur. You're gonna know when it's sulfur. If you brew something and it smells like shit, it is sulfur. And um, it happens to, it's happened to me probably five times in my life. And there's ways, I know what causes it. There's two main reasons that cause it. And I know like four ways of getting rid of it. So. People hit up Homebrew for Life and the people that are new to brewers and stuff like that. Um, I, I just wanted to give, give a little rant on this because after you write the same response, you know, 20, 25 times, start getting a little crazy. But uh, generally, it's mostly uh, a lager thing. I don't think I've ever got it from an ale. Uh, we made the YouTube video about... What was that video? We made apple cider we were we were trying to make a youtube video to make hard apple cider to buy everything at a um a supermarket i don't know where we were albertson's vaughn safeway doesn't matter but they sell bread yeast and they they do uh the organic hard apple cider like the thick stuff and we were like hey you know if we knew what we knew now we could go back in time and put the bread yeast in the cider put a condom on it as an airlock and like, how do we make booze for under $10? Just really ratty, like high school kid shit. And, um, we made it and it worked and it brutally smelled like baby turtle farts. And when you're, when you're going for, I think our gravity was like 1070. There was a lot of sugar in it and we were pitching bread yeast. So it's obviously not suitable for that. We're not doing like a, um, um, a yeast starter. We're doing bread yeast and it comes in the same packet that looks like safe fail. And we put it in there and we just knew the yeast was going to be stressed out. And I think that's the way you get sulfur is that you're just like going for a high gravity and you're hitting it with some yeast that cannot do that or it's getting close to expired or something. Um, and it smelled like baby turtle farts, but don't get me wrong. We still drank the shit out of it. And uh, I've got some B roll that I'll put over this video because I'll probably chop this up. We actually, I think we killed the whole bottle. Generally when something smells like shit, it's gonna taste like shit. But when you make it and you know there's booze in it, uh, the plot thickens. And, um, um, I, I think the second reason why we get sulfur from like my, uh, I think it was the Kvike Lutra that was like the brutal baby turtle fart smell in the beginning is when you're using non malts. Like if you're using like with loggers, you're, you're going to use corn or you're going to use rice. Or when we used, um, for the third batch of hard seltzer, that was the last one I've done. That was the fifth one I've done. I think it was, it, it doesn't matter. Dextrose or which is corn sugar or um, uh, cane sugar, which is table sugar. There's not, when you have malt, just all grain malt, you're gonna have all of like your amino acids in it. You're gonna have all your nitrogen in it. You're gonna have all your vitamins in it. When you're using rice and corn and sugar and stuff like that, it's not gonna have the same stuff that it has in yeast. So you gotta, you have to use yeast nutrient to compensate or the yeast is gonna get stressed out again. And if you don't use yeast nutrient, on a grain bill that's got a lot of other shit in it besides grain, you're probably gonna get sulfur. And that's a, that's exactly what happened with um, um, the 
uh, Kavik Lutra that Peter gave me. And when we made, when I, when I pitched that, like if you look at recipes online for hard seltzer, they're like, oh, use two grams of diammonium phosphate or use two grams of yeast nutrient or yeast energizer. I put a ounce in there and it turned out great. Not, not, not a gram, not two grams, an ounce, 28 grams for all you marijuana dealers out there. Um, so yeah, if you're, if you're getting away from like malt and you've got something else in your grain bill, I, I would use some yeast nutrient or you're going to get that, you're going to get that baby turtle butthole smell, camel toe farts, camel toe farts. So we've got sulfur. What are you going to do? What are we going to do? Four steps. And they all work. I think they all work. You know, hand sanitizer kills 99.9999999999% of bacteria. What's the point? Oh, 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 one. My ex-wife? No, it's for liability purposes. But I've got, I've used sulfur a bunch of different ways, or I've gotten rid of sulfur a couple different ways. And, um, um, I think most importantly, just let it ride out. Like when I finally hit my gravity for the card seltzer, it smelled like shit. And I just gave it another week. I just gave it another week. And after a week, it smelled great. It got rid of that smell. Um, rule number two, you can do a diacetyl rest. You bring it up. Um, if you're doing a lager, like again, you bring it down to whatever you're lagering, lagering at 52, 55, after 10 days or 12 days or 14 days, bring it up after you, after you hit your final gravity, bring it up a little bit. And just that time can, um, uh, get rid of the smell that's happened. Number three, probably the most common way I've got rid of sulfur is just purging it. I don't know if once I go from fermenter to corny keg, maybe there's a little bit of oxygen, you know, you maybe, it hitting oxygen releases that smell, that aroma. And then I crank my keg up to whatever, 15 PSI. And then I just, you know, make sure everything's airtight and I just purge it like four or five times. And after let it sit for three days in your keg rater, after a couple of days, you don't have that smell. And if all those things fail, if all those things fail, um, number four, don't buy that yeast strain ever again. <laughs>